Welcome to Practical Home Projects. We just finished the backsplash installation and I would like to walk through some of the tips we picked up when we were doing the tile install. Before you even start your project, you're going to want to make sure that all the walls you're working with are as flat as possible. So we kind of went around the room, checked with the level, and I actually noticed that this section right underneath the window had a little bit of an indention where the studs weren't perfectly lined up. And rather than just installing our tiles on that, you know, curved surface, which would end up giving us kind of the edges of the tile showing and it just would be not aesthetically very nice. We went ahead and just used drywall mud to kind of flatten that surface back out. So now hopefully we'll get a nice crisp surface uh, to work on. So if you're planning to work around an outlet, kind of like we are, um, it's a good idea to just go ahead and turn the circuit off. If for any reason you need some of the other outlets on the circuit, I like to put tape over the front of it. That way you don't mess up the front surface. And then also you can wrap black electrical tape around the screws and that will prevent you if you accidentally are touching it messing with it from electrocuting yourself. There's a couple things that to keep in mind when you're working around the electrical boxes. So first of all, if you are the one to install the electrical box, it will make your life a lot easier if you can get an adjustable depth type of box. So that way no matter how you install it, you can pull it right up to the surface. If you were not able to do that and you're kind of in my situation where it's fixed and it's kind of recessed behind the surface, just know that NEC code 314.20 says that you can have no more than a quarter inch recess behind the finished surface for a non-combustible material like drywall or tile. If it's a wood surface, it has to be perfectly flush. One solution to get around that is to use a junction box extender and that will basically kind of nest inside your junction box and allow it to accommodate that depth. Both the adhesive and the grout are very sticky substances and they're a little bit difficult to clean off so I like to protect any surface that I want to stay clean. So our brand new countertops I'm going to cover up with something durable like cardboard. I think just a plain newspaper probably wouldn't be good enough but I've seen people use kind of fabric drop cloths or you know plastic could also work. The spacing between your tiles is going to have a major impact on the aesthetic. So these are three by six inch tiles. So traditionally you're going to use a 1 8 inch gap, you might use a 1 16 inch gap. Um, going any bigger than 1 8 inch is probably going to be for bigger tiles like for your flooring. So we went with the 1 8 inch gap and we accomplished that by using these 1 16 inch silicone spacers. And then the tiles actually have built in on them a ridge that gives us an additional 1 16. This specific type of spacer you kind of put in on the surface and then you'll pluck them out as soon as the adhesive has cured and then you'll grout over it. There's another type of spacer that will be embedded in behind it. Usually that's only used for bigger spacers for flooring, um, and then you'll actually just grout right over those spacers. One of the most important concepts when you're laying out your tiles is to make sure that you don't end up with a really thin slice at the end. So what I found out is that if I start on this end with a whole tile, by the time I get all the way to the other end, there's just a little sliver of tile. And that's problematic because it's hard to get it to be perfectly flat and also it could be easily damaged. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and set this first row out with spacers and everything and then I've got the second row right here behind it. So I know that in every case if I have a small piece of a tile on this row I'm going to have a bigger piece of a tile on this row. I also know that if I had a small gap up here, that means on the other side I'm going to have a small gap at the end of this row. So what I'm doing is I'm shifting this whole set of tiles side to side to make sure that this sliver is as big as possible as well as the sliver way down on that end is as big as possible. And I do that until they're approximately the same size. It's going to be about a third of a tile. On the inside corners, it's particularly tricky because you're going to have two cut edges kind of butting up against one another. So you're going to want to leave a little bit of a gap. So make sure that you measure out not only the thickness of a tile, but also a little bit of a gap there. And then instead of filling that in with grout, you're going to fill it in with silicone so it can kind of expand and contract uh, with your house. Use a Sharpie to mark the top of your tile. They're easy to write with, easy to see, and then you can just wipe it right off that surface when you're done. We use a tile cutter for most of our straight cuts. Uh, we found this is a lot easier than using any type of saw and that way it doesn't create a lot of debris. Um, this ended up only being $22 to buy so we just went ahead and did that because it was almost the same price just to rent it for a day. 
The tile cutter is not going to work if you need to shave off just a tiny piece or if you need to do more detailed cuts. Um, so if you're not going to be doing this type of project often, you probably don't need to invest into a wet tile saw because those are several hundred dollars. And actually just renting one for the day is about $60. So we ended up using a, an 8 amp angle grinder and then attaching a diamond bit blade and that pretty much did everything we needed. Using a laser level will really help you get a nice crisp sharp look across your kitchen. Uh, those are especially important when you're in the corners or if you're going over a gap, for example, behind your stove. Um, the most important thing to do is to line up that first row. Uh, once your first row is set up, then the rest of it will fall into place pretty well, assuming that you use those spacers correctly. And then when you're lining up that first row, if you find you have some high spots and low spots, it, it's a little bit easier to shave the bottom off of some tiles than it is to have a big gap you have to fill in later. We use this trowel with one quarter inch depth and one quarter inch wide grooves to apply our adhesive. I found the easiest way to cover a big area was to spread it on the wall and then scrape it in a horizontal manner and make sure not to apply any more than you can uh, place tiles on immediately. Um, sometimes I'll use the back buttering method for the tiles when I'm going right around an outlet or if it's near the end of the day and I don't want to over apply adhesive by putting it directly on the wall. The tiles already have a built-in spacer, but that spacer does not continue all the way to the corner. So when you're applying your little silicon spacers, make sure to tuck those in a little bit away from the edges. You definitely want to put two on the bottom so that you're level horizontally. And on the end, it's not a bad idea to put them two even on the short side so that you can make sure that you have uh, even space all the way up. When you're doing your fine detail cuts, it helps to go about an eighth of an inch wide, for example, around this electrical box, and then you're going to want to be very careful with it. I broke a couple of these as I was working, so while you're cutting, you want to be careful, and you want to be careful while you're applying it as well. There's a couple things to keep in mind when doing the edge trim. So you can use a piece of tile, so they make special edging tile and corner piece tiles for the edge trim, and those look really nice, but they don't make them for every single type of tile. So that's why we went with this sleek metal look. Um, these are pretty universal, you can match them with just about any type of tile. When you're picking out the metal trim, be careful to make sure that yours is the right thickness so that it roughly matches the thickness of your tile with the adhesive behind it, as well as it'll have a little gap next to it, and that gap on the trim should match the grout gap that you have with your tiles. Additionally, when you're installing them, you'll see that I'm using the mastic, and that's going right over that gap in the in the trim and that's the best way to adhere it. You don't want to use any nails or anything because then it'll get fixed into space and you won't be able to wiggle it around. When you're cutting your metal trim uh, you can just use any good metal cutting saw and then be sure to sand off and polish that corner so that it looks nice and smooth. So we just installed all this tile last night and then this morning we wanted to use these outlets so I went ahead and started tightening down these outlets just the way they are. Temporary fix and I broke the tile. So I can kind of attribute this mistake to two things that we did incorrectly. So the first one is, hard to see now, I'll kind of pop this broken piece off, is that the drywall was not flush all the way to the box. So what happened is that even though this had adhesive on it, it was not fully supported on the drywall behind it. So it was kind of free floating, so when we put force on it, it broke off. The second thing is that this junction box does not come all the way to the surface. When I installed it originally, I should have accommodated it for the tiles and had it all the way to the surface. Unfortunately, now it's recessed, so the only alternative to fix it is to put a junction box extender, which will have a little bit of a lip, which will kind of rest on top of the tiles and A, protect from something like this happening, and also B, kind of as a safety feature to make sure that no electricity gets out of the junction box. I hope these tips were helpful for you guys. If any of you have done this project yourself and you have anything else to add, please leave those in the comments section below. I would love to see it and respond to those in the future. Thanks and have a good one.